over the ground there. Picture it there. And some more here. This will be useful for our windy day flint and steel fire challenge. So we'll use this to strike a spark off our blade. One of these anyway. What do you think, dude? <laughs> he says he doesn't care. Okay, well let's keep going. Uh, get up here a little ways. Try to find a place that's, that's even windier. As you can see, it's pretty windy today. Kind of coming in gusts about 20 miles an hour. Part of our day. All right, dude. This is a first tag of two different tags. I was tagged three times actually. Uh, I'm gonna get this tag. It's pretty windy out, pretty overcast. There's some weather moving in, so it's been raining here off and on for a few days now. Anyway, I was tagged by Take It Outside. Uh, that's a uh, cowboy Viking from uh, Take It Outside. Uh, this is his tag, and it's uh, start a flip steel fire in windy conditions. And uh, I'm not going to leave this fire burning. I'm going to get the fire going. I'm going to put it out. Even though we've been raining for a couple of days. Uh, I just don't want to take the chance in this wind, so we're going to do a quick uh, flip and steel fire, as we think we are. I just have some uh, char cloth here, just some charred co uh, cotton, and some uh, rocks. Uh, let's see. I have uh, some obsidian here that I got earlier. And then I have uh, some shirt that I picked up on the way in. So we're going to try that. So here we go. We're just going to get it right into the... Uh, I'm going to leave some of these rocks in here to keep uh, keep my char charred material from blowing all the way here. I'm just going to strike it off the back of a knife. Let's see if we can throw some sparks here. Okay, we got a few things going here. Ah, yeah, that's one. Okay, let's just drop that into our tinder bundle. This is uh, some bark I gathered a little earlier today. It's a little damp. Of all the rain we've been getting. Let's drop it. We're actually going to use this wind to our advantage, I think. So I'm just going to close that over the tinder. Yes, we even have more in here burning. We don't want to burn all our charred material up, so we're going to close it up. There we go. We're just gonna hold that to the wind. Kind of like a little hand sock, yeah. A little hand puppet. I'm sure the wind lets up now. There's so much moisture. This bark, I'd rather just let the wind do it. Here we go. So 
we're going to close that up. A little bit of uh, charred material is still burning. burst into flames like that. Like it just did. Well there's our fire. And we'll take some of this kindling that I gathered earlier. And we'll just let that catch. That wind will... We don't have to blow on it anymore. There's enough wind here. A good gust will come through here and just reignite this. Might take a minute. think, you know, you can use quartz, you can use uh, all kinds of stuff, but a lot of people think, uh, you know, you just have to use, uh, the only thing you can use is flint. That's not true. You can use chert. Chert is a low-grade flint, and uh, you find it's all over the place, especially here in the, uh, in Montana and Washington State, all, all pretty much all throughout the Northwest. That's taking its time getting started, I know. But it will go. That's what we need, some good wind. Let's go. There we go. She's burning now, guys. Anyway, this is for uh, you, Cowboy Viking, and uh, you guys check out his channel. He's got an excellent channel. He also tagged me in another video, and I'll get to that in a little while when I get it to a place where I'm actually out of the wind. And I don't have to yell over the wind. burnt down by now. The wind actually just helps.
radical, he tagged me as well. And he started a tag called uh, Three Books that we've read in our youth or whatever that influenced, influenced us most about how we approach the outdoors, uh, what we do outdoors, and how we experience the outdoors. And uh, for me, it's pretty simple. Uh, the autobiography of Daniel Boone uh, was certainly a, a big influence on me when I was a kid growing up and uh, how I look at the outdoors. Uh, you can actually find that online. You can, uh, you can go online, Daniel Boone uh, autobiography, and you can actually find that. What do you think, dude? Okay. Sorry. Trying this uh, stick here. Okay, guys. So, got out of a little bit of the wind here. It's still blowing pretty bad. I'll let you have a look around here. As you can see, we're pretty deep in the timber up on the side of this bridge here. Anyway, so, yeah, getting back to my second tag, what were my three favorite books, or the books that influenced me the most growing up? Okay, so the first one was, of course, the Daniel Boone auto autobiography. Uh, after that, I would have to say, uh, it's not really a book, a short story. A short story but it was uh, by, uh, uh, yeah, he's such a great author, I can't think of his name, but uh, he wrote Call of the North and he did a bunch of short stories. And Jack London, he wrote a story called, now when I was a kid in school, we used to get those weekly readers, that's probably aging me now, but we used to get the, and then one of the weekly readers was this story called To Build a Fire. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with that story. But I read that story, and if you haven't read it, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But it's by Jack London, and it's called To Build a Fire. You can probably look that up on the internet, too. And that thing haunted me all my life, that story did. And uh, it's probably why I uh, became pretty proficient at making all kinds of different friction wires and all kinds of different wires and under all kinds of different conditions because of that story to build a fire. So that would have to be number two that really had a, an impact on my life and what I do outdoors. And the third book, yeah, That's a, that's a tough one, but you know, I'm going to go technical on you here. Okay, the late, great Larry Dean Olson, I've talked about his books before. Okay, that was a, a really good book, but that wasn't really top on my technical books of how-to books. But uh, Outdoor Survival Skills by Larry Dean Olson was a very good book, and I've talked about this before in, in another video. Yeah, but uh, I'd say the, the one book on the how to book that really kind of changed my life as to how the in, indigenous people lived and, and wanted me to learn more about them and, and how I could get along in the bush was a book about the Australian Aborigines and it was called, uh, uh, yeah, 
It's called Red Sand and Brown Men, or Brown Men and Red Sand. I can't even remember who the author is now, but I have that book at home. should have pulled it out and looked at the author. I'll mention it in another video. But, yeah. Brown Men and Red Sand. It was about the Aborigines of Australia. Yeah, I'd like to tag Girl in the Woods. Uh, what were your three favorite books and uh, that influenced the way you uh, experience the outdoors and the way you look at the outdoors today? And I'd also like to tag OK Bushcraft, Oklahoma Bushcraft. John, John, I'd you know, man, I'm going to tag you because uh, I'm real curious what influenced you and how the way you experienced the outdoors when you were growing up. You know, what books you read. And so what are your three favorite books that influenced your life in the outdoors and the way you experienced the outdoors? So that's it. So this is Woods Runner. And the dude, he's over here somewhere. Who are you, dude? Behind me there. That's the dude. And uh, I just want to say God bless. Thanks uh, for tagging me. Uh, Cowboy Viking and Dave Whipple from Bush Radical. And appreciate the tag. And until I get this. Uh, My uh, computer straightened out. I probably won't be doing too many more tags for a while. So, anyway, guys, y'all take care. Take her easy. Take her. Talk to you later. This is Woods. Out.